Hi, hi. How are you all doing? Good. Okay, you all look energetic. So let's just start. And uh, as it says on the board, the we are going to talk about all the challenges and the best practices that we can actually you know, give to you from our experience up, uh, while upgrading Istio in, in a production environment. All right, so as mentioned earlier by Mitch, I am Nalpama Singh. I work as a software engineer in a small scale startup in India uh, called Reskill. And uh, there is, uh, that's my Twitter where you can find me. And yeah. Hi. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. yeah. Hi, I am Ekanj Gupta and I am a software engineer at this startup called Zeta. And we are a fintech startup, and we do IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS for banking services. Uh, so yeah, service meshes are very important for us. Uh, so you can find my Twitter handle there, and uh, let's hand it over to Nirupama. All right. So what are we going to cover today exactly is uh, the strategies that we can take for upgrading uh, Istio, the pros and cons for uh, taking up the different strat uh, strategies, as well as the common challenges that one can face. So we are going to go in a pattern of things to do before upgrading, then upgrading, and then post up upgrading things to take care of. Uh, first of all, this was the most obvious slide I had to add. So what's Istio? It's we, everyone here knows it's an open source service mesh that helps uh, you know organizations in running distributed microservices based apps everywhere then there's the architecture of Istio now uh, there are two planes to it control plane then there's data plane your control plane contains all of the management and every configuration that maybe is custom or is pre-installed that uh, exists in our Istio then there's our data plane, which controls all the traffic, where the traffic goes and how much of the traffic goes in the different services. Now, over the course of the years, we have seen that uh, the structure of the issue has changed uh, entirely. Now it looks more contained, but the thing is it's, it's exactly the, sa the same as it was before. So we had few things like Pilot, Citadel, Galley over there uh, before in our control plane. Now it's all in, in a combined state and it's called Istio D. And then there's data plane as it is with the different services and proxies that they uh, manage the traffic towards, right? Uh, this is just a small, uh, uh, proxy status and everything uh, that the things these are contained the system thing different things contained in the system so why do we need to upgrade our Istio it's the most basic reason is you want to stay up to date you want to keep adding the latest features that Istio has to provide to you with the dif uh, different upcoming uh, features it's for security and it's for better performance by the day next slide so uh, this is a simple command you see here, which is which will manifest the uh, manif manifest generate to install a Istio for you. And when you do this, there are a list of things that gets installed all together in, with this single command. So that this is the big list. So it contains like 15 custom resource definitions, two deployments. These two deployments are Istio D and Istio Gateways. Then, uh, as you can see in the list, there's mutating web uh, webhook configurations, which is basically uh, what they do is whenever a new pod is generated, it attaches a sidecar to it automatically. So there's one of those. Then there's horizontal pod autoscaler. We'll talk about north uh, horizontal north south and the vertical east west later on in the presentation. So this is just the basic custom uh, configurations that guests get installed. This is part of the screenshots. If you want to look at them, otherwise we can move. But I'll let it stay on the screen. Yeah, so uh, whenever we install Istio, uh, we have like 15 CRDs. And uh, I just generated the YAML for that, those 15 CRDs. And you can see them on the screen right now. Uh, so this is probably the most basic installation of Istio right now, and we will go into the upgrades later. Okay, so uh, the slide says, why should we uh, decouple Istio components? Why are the, uh, 
yeah so why should we decouple istio components is because we have so many services and different components working inside the uh, istio now what we want to do is work on them be able to work on them individually so that you do not go through the whole file uh, make some change that you are going to do and then have to rerun the whole deployment each time you are you are even making a small update so that is where these similar uh, smaller uh, components come in so that whatever you are updating can be uh, the deployment can be rerun only one deployment needs rerunning in the smaller components takes up less less of your time and the whole istio is maintained so uh, yeah on the left hand side you can see the istio d operator in the middle we have the north south traffic and in the right hand side we can see the east west traffic so the north south traffic is the traffic between uh, coming into the cluster and going out of the cluster the east west traffic is uh, from service a to service b inside the cluster so if we want to change a port of a service so from like uh, 15443 to some like 8080 or something uh, it's although it's tls but uh, if we want to we can uh, then we just have to decouple the east west traffic operator and we can just do that uh, apart from that there is a possibility that uh, uh, the istio d operator or the istio control plane is being managed by a separate team and the uh, uh, other things like uh, traffic management or the gateways are managed by another team so it's uh, good to decouple istio components so that uh, even if we are making any changes or if we are making any deployments afterwards we don't have to make a huge change to the istio uh, at one point of time we can just do one specific change and we can do the deployment okay so before upgrading uh, what should we do so before upgrading we should back up all the configurations so obviously so let's just say that our istio is going on from 1.12 to 1.13 and we have not yet tested uh, how it is going to look like right if it's going to be compatible or not although it should be because istio when we are doing a rolling upgrade uh, istio n uh, version should be compatible with istio n plus 1 version so uh, although it is compatible we should uh, always do a snapshot of our basic configurations uh, whenever we can so before upgrading just do a like output in a yaml form and just keep it out if uh, your deployment is like broken if the upgrade is broken we can just roll it back in one single command then we have the istio ctl precheck command um, so i don't know if you are familiar with upgrades but uh, uh, with kubernetes we have kubectl with istio we have istio ctl and uh, for any validating prechecks if uh, the deployments is going to go through or not if we have to monitor anything we can just do a istio ctl x precheck it will give us if uh, the whole uh, like cluster is compatible with istio uh, also with that we can also do a istio ctl bug report which will give us all the uh, uh, like logs and everything the in one single plane and we can just compare the logs afterwards uh, the third point would be to address and analyze any issues so just analyze all namespaces if they are compatible with istio istio proxy status how many services are registered to the service mesh so pretty straightforward next uh, i would say that uh, istio is one of those services which has a lot of metrics exposed a lot and lot of metrics exposed so we should always have a grafana dashboard ready for istio what version over all the namespaces were running at all the deployments were running at before the upgrade after the upgrade what is the uh, resource quotas what how much is the peak load everything we can just check the grafana dashboard before the uh, istio upgrade and after the istio upgrade and uh, we can compare if the upgrade was uh, successful or not the fifth point is go and look at the istio upgrade notes uh, so it's different from the release notes but uh, upgrade notes are very important and it will tell you if you have any breaking change in the istio upgrade when you are doing from some n version to some n plus one or n plus two version uh, coming back so this is a sample grafana dashboard here uh, in in this place we see that all my pods are running on 1.18.2 of uh, istio and uh, so i couldn't get a screenshot where uh, there were 
uh, like two separate instances of Istio running. But uh, if you have any Grafana dashboard built in like this, we can see uh, until and unless the whole deployment is restarted, the sidecars are not upgraded to the control plane uh, version. So there can be a possibility that at a single point of time, there might be a 1.16 or 1.17 running along with the 1.18 version as well. Apart from that, we can see the memory usage, the CPU usage, the disk, and everything. So this is a basic Grafana dashboard, and I would recommend highly, whenever we are working with Istio, we should always have a Grafana dashboard ready beforehand. Okay, so what should we pay the most attention to? So the most attention we should go to uh, if you have any custom configurations. So let's say we have any WASM filters present. If we have any WASM filters present in like 1.11, 1.12, we have custom WASM, WASM filters, we have custom configurations, we want to do something uh, which is not being directly given by Istio, we should look after that because as soon as we are upgrading to one point, like if we are on 1.11, we are upgrading to 1.12 or 1.13 if it is Canary, then we can, like these custom configurations can break. So we need to look after those custom configurations and always Envoy filters. They can be like a pain. So we should always look after those. So types of upgrade. Uh, so there is one which is called Canary. Uh, which is the most recommended one. The second is rolling or in-place uh, upgrades. And we have a third upgrade mechanism, which is called, uh, in our terms, lazy upgrades. I will talk about la lazy upgrades in like the coming slides. Um, and we have to consider the factors like service availability, rollback options, and complexity. And we should always choose the strategy that aligns with our organization priorities. Because the thing is that I am in a banking uh, company. Like we manage a lot of lot of transactions per day. And if my like if I do an in-place uh, upgrade and it breaks, then there would be a definite breach of SLS. So that would cost us upwards of a couple of hundred thousand dollars. So in Indian rupees, that's like a lakh to a crore rupees, and that's a lot. Uh, apart from that, uh, yeah, we will talk about in-place deployments, canary and everything. So yes, if we are doing an in-place in deployment, what should we do? So in in-place deployments, it's very easy, direct upgrades. So if you have to go to N version, if you are on N version, you have to go to N plus five version, you have to go to N plus one, then N plus two, and then N plus three. And then you will go after N plus four, N plus five. So if you are on 1.9 to 1.18, I would say, like I've shown in the Grafana dashboard, then you will have to start with 1.9, going to 1.10, then 1.11, 1.12, and taking care of everything if all the sidecars are working perfectly and nothing is breaking, especially the one, the custom configurations that we had told earlier. If we are doing a canary deployments, the only difference is that Istio will say, okay, if you are on N version, you can do a N plus two max to max. So if you are on 1.9, you can go to 1.11 without any breaking changes. Yeah, so in place or rolling upgrade. So in place uh, upgrade, we directly start upgrading the STO operator or the STOD control plane. Then we upgrade the ingress gateways, the um, egress gateways. We restart the deployments because if we do not restart the deployments, the sidecars will not uh, go to the same version of Istio that is there on the control plane. And then we do a Istio CTL pro proxy status and we will find if we have any problems with any of the services or the deployments. Now coming to our lazy upgrade options. So a lazy upgrade is a very funny thing because you have to take care of a lot of things, but it is a very fast upgrade path. So what you can do is on a lower environment, we can do uh, something like a rolling upgrade. Uh, we can check if we are going from 1.11 to 1.19, we can check on 1.12 if everything is working fine in your cluster. You can check on 1.13, 1.14, 1.19, until 1.19, whatever it is. Uh, in uh, lazy upgrades, you can directly go to prod, go from 1.11 to 1.19 with the control plane, uh, going from 1.12, 13, 14, without restarting any of the deployments. Because you have already checked that everything will work perfectly fine on the lower environment. We can schedule something like an EKS upgrade or any of the 
like AKS upgrade or GKE upgrade or whatever, and it will uh, do your restart of all the namespaces at one go. So that is something called a lazy upgrade, and that is the path we chose in our recent upgrade uh, timeline. Now, coming to canary upgrade. So canary upgrade, the most recommended one. What do you do? So we have two ways to do canary upgrades. One is uh, we have a control plane with 1.12. We put in a control plane with 1.13. We start to redirect traffic to 1.13. Uh, as soon as we are on 100% load, we have the dashboards ready. We do not see any spike. Everything is working correctly. We just delete the earlier version of 1.12. The second one is uh, we have 1.12. We do a blue-green type deployment where uh, what we do is we put 1.13 and uh, we put we do a uh, deployment of the same service which was serving 1.12. And then we redirect it to 1.13 and we delete the service and the HTO control plane as well. OK, after upgrading, what do we do? So after upgrading, we analyze all namespaces if they are working fine. Uh, we go and check the Grafana dashboard if any spikes. Then we do nothing but a bug report. We can see in the bug report, we will have logs. So we can compare it to the logs that were earlier generated before upgrades. And we can see if anything is breaking or not. If something is breaking, you can just roll back because we have taken a, a snapshot earlier in the day. OK, so how much time do we have? 10 minutes. OK, so let's try to do a demo because uh, I don't know. I am working with Minikube, so I don't know if that will work perfectly, but let's do a demo. Just give me a minute. I need to change my laptop. <clears throat> so do we have a question till now? Yes, please. So just one question, because I'm going to start with the demo. Uh, yeah, you mentioned like, uh, you know, how do you pace out the normal service deployment along with that? Like, do you ask developer, you, you're not supposed to deploy your services at this point when the Istio is ongoing like or is, is is kind of transparent to the developers sorry so i'm saying like you know do you kind of pace out the istio deployment with the service deployment like the application developer uh, they okay. the service at the same time yeah because so the it, thing is so when we are a com when we we are in a company which is dealing with a lot of transactions as i told earlier we have a uh, Windows schedules for all our deployments, right? If there is an infra-related deployment, that would be scheduled at a time which will not affect our any other service deployment. When we are doing a service deployment, I would not priority. Uh, I will not prioritize uh, uh, any other type of deployment. So, huh. so the thing is that. Uh, yeah, coming back to your question, uh, whenever I am doing an Istio upgrade, EKS upgrade, or some type of some type of upgrade, I will not put a service deployment on that. Although we can, because if I am doing a service deployment, I can and it's a canary uh, and on the Istio upgrade, it's a canary upgrade. We can just redirect it to the old control plane, and then we can start moving traffic to the new control plane. So that would not be a problem. Okay. Hmm. So what do we have? So I am using something known as K9S. Huh? Okay. Hmm. Okay. So I am using something known as K9S. How many of you have heard about K9S? Oh, a lot of you. I have seen people work with Lens, but I prefer K9S over Lens because I can work in, on Terminal. Uh, so what do we have? So I have uh, started a Minikube instance, and we have a de default namespaces and all the namespaces which are started at the time when uh, a new cluster is started. OK, so what we are doing is So we are in Istio demo. OK, clear. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I, so let's do a Istio CTL version check. 
on my system, on globally, my system is running 1.19.3 right now. Uh, if I go to, let's just say, I have downloaded 1.12.5. If I go there, I have installed something known as Derenv. And thanks to people at, uh, I would say, I would like to give a shout out to Tetrate Labs because they have shown me. Uh, thanks uh, for Derenv. It will give me the, it will use the bin path of 12.5 as Istio version. So let's check Istio CTL version. Exactly. So uh, let's do a cube CTX. Let's check what is my context right now. OK. So I have a mini cube running right now. Uh, clear. Yes. Uh, now, what I will do is I will check if uh, I will use the pre-check command to check if everything will be working fine on the uh, our mini cube side, Istio CTL x pre-check. And we can see that uh, Istio is safe to install or upgrade. So we have a 12.5 Istio version which we are going to install. And uh, according to the pre-check command, it's very safe to install. Thank God. Uh, let's install Istio. So I have used Sublime Text to copy all my commands here so that I don't forget. So the easiest way to, cop uh, to install Istio is do this. So we have an Istio CTL install. Uh, with revision 1-12-5. If I change the revision, it might conflict, but I don't want to check. Uh, so let's do this. It will ask if I should install all the core components of Istio. I will just do a Y and I will go ahead with the installation. Just a couple of minutes, some warnings. Uh, there is a problem, but that is due to uh, Minikube, I think. And, but Apart from that, Istio 12.5 would be installed. Let's go to K9S. So we have an Istio system namespace coming up, and we have an ingress gateway and an Istio D. If we go deployments, we have Istio D 12.5, right? Uh, let's see how much time it will take to come up. Okay, so the container is still creating, and it will do continue to do so for like another two minutes. Do we have any questions in the between in in the meanwhile? Questions? Okay. Uh, let's try to do something else. Let's try to see all the pods. So I can already see the pods on K9S, but uh, let's do a kubectl check. Uh, yeah, so ingress gateway pod is uh, being created, and Istio control plane is being created. Uh, uh, it's running, yeah. Next, uh, let's do a check for mutating webhooks. Uh, as mentioned by Nirupama, mutating webhooks are nothing, but uh, whenever a new pod of any service is created, mutating webhooks will check and in inject a sidecar to it. So kubectl get mutating. Hmm, web hook configurations. Yes, so we have a sidecar injected for 1.12.5. Uh, let's do one thing. So I know we might not be able to get this done. Uh, let's see. Deployments. OK, it's running. Thank God. Uh, let's deploy something such as the book info and everything. Let's let's skip that. Let's start with uh, uh, installing 13.2 or whatever it is. Uh, so let's go to this cd dot dot cd. And as soon as I uh, go into the directory for Istio 13.2, I get the 13.2 Istio CTL version. So Istio CTL uh, version. It says that my client version is on 13.2, uh, but my control plane version is still on 1.12.5, uh, and the data plane version or the sidecar proxies are on 1.12.5. So what I will do is HTOCTL 
analyze first uh let's do this yeah so after analyzing nothing is found as a problem so we can go ahead with installing 13.2 uh, we will use this command it will yeah it will just say that yes istio is being upgraded from 12.5 to 13.2 do you want to do that and i certainly want to do that so yes <coughs> uh some problems with minikube but everything else might show up now uh, istio system yeah so istio d13.2 is coming up uh istio gateway ingress gateway for that 13.2 is also coming up and uh, my 12.5 version and the istio gateway for, sorry uh, ingress gateway for 12.5 is also working so uh i do we have time no okay so let me just explain what we are going to do next i will just stop here uh so I, although i did not deploy any service here but if i had deployed any service it would be serving on uh, our 12.5 version as soon i could have done two things i could have just deleted 12.5 and the traffic would have rerouted to 13.2 or i could have uh, deployed the same version of the service as a blue green deployment and i could have uh, uh, made some waits like uh, 90% of the traffic will go to 12.5 uh, and 10% uh, will go to 13.2 and as soon as everything is working fine we can just do the change in waits from 90 10 to 50 50 and then the reverse 100 zero and when then we can delete the whole thing another thing is in the blue green deployment we can just put a whole new service which will be serving with 13.2 and uh, we can remove the old service with 12.5 so that was the presentation for istio upgrades uh if you have any questions please let us know yeah uh, thank you for, for the presentation um so when upgrading between uh minor versions like you did the example 1.12 Yes. Um if you want to upgrade to say like the latest version like 1.19. Yes. Is the best to do incremental upgrades or um... Yeah, a rolling upgrade would be the best way to do. So I would go from 1.12 to 1.13 then 14 then 15 then 16 then 17. Okay. Like that. So that minimizes just like breaking. Yeah, so it still says that uh, only n plus like the 1.13 will have uh, no breaking changes with 1.12. but it will it will not give you guarantee for 1.11 mm -hmm. so that is why i will do just a rolling upgrade for that or a lazy upgrade if i have checked all my upgrades uh with a pre prod type kind of environment 